Mr. Secretary, I want to return to the issue of the strikes in Syria last week and uh, Senator Wicker's line of questioning about the timing of notification to Congress. You said that you, quote, should have notified Congress earlier. Uh, these attacks happened against our troops, uh, killing one contractor uh, early in the morning Eastern time. Um, do you believe that you should have notified us that morning while we were voting on amendments directly related to this kind of attack? Uh, again, uh, there, there is no uh, connection between when we notified you, Senator, and, and, uh, and your vote. Um, the chairman and I were testifying uh, that morning as well. So as soon as we came out of testimony, uh, we began work on, uh, on uh, crafting response options. So. Secretary Austin, I don't believe you. I believe that your office specifically withheld notification of this deadly strike against Americans because the Rubio Amendment, on which we voted midday, directly touched on exactly this scenario, not repealing these use of force resolutions if the President couldn't certify that Iran was no longer attacking us in Iran and Syria. That's what I believe. Nothing you can say is going to change my belief about that. And I've got to say, I think I speak for about a lot I of my I just want to say, Senator, that that is absolutely not true. Maybe you didn't personally do it. Maybe you didn't personally do it. But I believe entirely that people in your office did that. You have a vast legislative operation, as Senator Wicker pointed out. Do you really expect us to believe that they didn't know that we were voting on a Rubio amendment that directly, directly covered exactly this kind of attack? I, I don't believe that. I, do, I don't believe it. I, may, I believe there's a conscious decision made not to inform Congress because you fear that it might lead to the passage of the Rubio amendment, which would kill the entire bill. But I, I want to move on to a, a more important part, which is these attacks in the first place. How many attacks? has Iran or its proxies launched against American positions in Iran and Syria uh, since Joe Biden took office? It's been uh, about 83 attacks, I think, uh, since uh, in, in the last several years. That's a lot of attacks over two years. How many times have we retaliated against Iran or its proxies? We, we've launched four major strikes, Senator, but not, an attack can consist of a number of things. It can consist of, um, you know, a rocket that's fired in the direction of one of our bases, but I, not effective. Mi Mr. Secretary, I'm well aware of what an attack could, could entail. So we're so 79 and four is Iran's record right now, and, and our four attacks have not been against Iran, right? They've been against Iran's proxies in Iraq or Syria or elsewhere. Is that well, correct? Well, this last attack was against uh, IRGC Quds Force uh, infrastructure, and uh, okay, um, and after we retaliated. Iran attacked us again, injuring another American, didn't it? They did. And have we retaliated for that attack on Friday? We have not yet, Senator. So what kind of signal do we think this sends to Iran when they can attack us 83 times since Joe Biden has become president and we only respond four? Maybe it's because they know that, until th that we will not retaliate until they kill an American, which emboldens them to keep launching these attacks which kill Americans. Um, what is our rules of engagement for on-the-ground commanders throughout the region? Are they allowed to engage immediately if their position has been attacked? They can, and, and they do, uh, and uh, there have been several instances of that, Senator. I've got to say, I've heard from company and field-grade commanders who have been in the region very recently, and they say there's a lot of confusion over that. Let me move to a related topic, and that's our operations of unmanned aircraft in the Black Sea. Russia down one of our Reaper aircraft a couple of weeks ago. Have we flown those aircrafts into the exact same space since it was downed? We, we have flown uh, on the paths that we want to fly in the Black Sea to collect uh, uh, intelligence uh, information. So that is a far, that's far from a yes answer. I, I said, have we flown in the same airspace? You've said we've flown in the paths we want to fly to collect intelligence. So have we adjusted our flight patterns? Have we moved down to that airspace? I, we, we will fly the paths that we feel necessary to collect uh, uh, intelligence information. So uh, according to an uh, administration official from an article in CNN on March 21st, uh, we're not flying in that airspace to, quote, to avoid being too provocative. So uh, are we removing our aircraft out of the space from that which that Reaper flew because we don't want to be too provocative towards Russia? Senator, you may have heard me say uh, immediately after this incident uh, to, uh, that I, I told my counterpart that we're going to fly the skies, the international skies, and sail the seas uh, as, as we wish. And so we continue to fly in that, in that airspace. In the exact same airspace where that Reaper was downed? 
Again, you haven't pulled back from Crimea or from the Ukrainian or the Russian coasts. I recommend we take we take this to uh, a closed uh, a closed. We session. can. I think it answers the question, though, and it, it gets to the point I'm trying to make here. We continue to deter ourselves against our adversaries. We let Iran launch 83 attacks against us. We only respond four times. Russia downs one of our aircraft, and we pull back from that airspace, just like we've been delaying ballistic missile tests over the last two year or over the last year, just like we let a Chinese spy balloon float across the country when we could have downed it across the Aleutians. Now, I don't necessarily think these are Secretary of Defense calls. I think these are Commander in Chief calls. But we shouldn't be surprised when our adversaries get emboldened and more aggressive in all these theaters when we continue to deter ourselves.